Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today I'm going to be talking about the best to-do apps for Linux. Now I'm calling them the the best. These are just the ones that I've found that are reasonably okay. Uh, really, to-do apps are very personal things, kind of like calendars, and the one you like the most is the one you like the most Might not and might not be the one that I like the most. So the one I like the most happens to be closed source. And I'll talk about that at the end. The other ones on this list, I believe, are all open source. So take that for what you will. Most of the time, I recommend use Floss Software. This time, the one I use just happens to be the best one out there for me. So before we start, just in the comments below, let me know what the to-do app that you use the most is and why. And Because it's one of those things like that. there's just so many to-do apps out there. I've chosen five of them to put on this list. But there are like 10 bajillion gajillion uh, out there so chances are maybe you've probably found one that I haven't so let me know what those are so let's go ahead and jump in the first one that I'm going to cover is called planner now as you can see this looks weird and this is not what it will look like for you probably if you use a desktop environment like you know KDE or plasma or gnome or whatever this is gonna look fine but if you use a window manager it does not look good at least with the EWM, I'm not sure if this would look the same in BSPWM or whatever, or any of the others. This is just what it looks like. It's a shame that it doesn't work well in window managers because this is probably the one that I would use if it looked better. And that's just, like I said, that's just a shame. It, it, the best part about this is if you use Todoist, this will actually sync with Todoist so that you could use the mobile phone app uh, of Todoist that's to sync tasks tasks back and forth and that's you know really awesome none of the other ones really truly have a sync feature to an actual app and to do is with the to do is integration here you also get the auto completion and the really cool I don't know what they call it basically it says I'm going to do a task tomorrow and it knows that I'm saying I'm going to do a task tomorrow so it schedules it for tomorrow and puts it you know on tomorrow's list same thing if you I'm going to do it this task next week at two on Tuesday at 4 p.m. it schedules it for Tuesday at 4 p.m. next week this will do that if you have Todoist installed there's also uh, a lot of t uh, tagging things that you can do here you don't have to use Todoist if you don't want to with us you can just use this as a standalone to do app I believe there are other syncing capabilities here. I'm not actually sure. See, the the issue here is, is I don't think I can actually get to the, um, well, maybe preferences. Yep, here we go. Yeah, it doesn't look like there's other syncing capability here, so it's just Todoist. But there are some other customization things that you can do that aren't related to Todoist if you're not using it. So that's cool. You can also obviously change it to dark mode, which is nice. And and Arc Dark is here. So winning for that. Now, like I said, this one works best if you do sync with Todoist, because a lot of the features I think really do revolve around Todoist. So I really wish it worked well with window managers. But alas, I'm just gonna have to live with my disappointment. Let's go into the next one. The next one I'm going to cover is Todour. T-O-D-O-U-R. I don't care for this one all that much, mainly because it's not very well designed. I'm not actually sure if it's still being updated or not. I think it is. Let me go look and see. It's kind of still being updated. The last update for the AUR package was in August of 2020. So, you know, take that for what you will. It's okay. It, if you want a just standalone task manager that does literally nothing else use this one it does have some options so you can customize a few of the you know a few of the way that it presents your tasks to you and some of the key bindings and stuff it's cool uh, and it does just enough to you know work as a to-do app a lot all the other ones on this list do more than this one does they all also look better than this one. I think that this is a, a cute app. I'm not sure. Personally, if you're going, if you need a cute app, I would just use one of the K-Suite stuff because 
uh, I'm not who the hell knows what it's actually called, but KDE has their own little suite of t productivity applications that come with like KMail and all that kind of stuff. So you could just use that. That's what I would do. I do not have any of the K-Suite stuff installed on this computer, mainly because it would require a whole bunch of KDE, you know, um, dependencies. I'm just not going to do that. All right, so let's move on to the next one. Okay, so the next one is a, an app called Go For It. Now, this is a GTK application. It's fairly well designed. It's a little weird. So, it's most. I would say that this one would work better for like, uh, like grocery shopping lists than really to do to do apps. But it does to do lists okay. I say that because. Unlike the other ones, you can actually have separate lists. So, like, you can have, like, a, a, a it's kind of similar, like, to storing, like, projects in, like, Todoist or something, where you could go through and just, you know, you, you have a, a writing one and a work one, or a work list and a writing list and all these things. That's kind of cool. It stores them in text files, so you could transfer these two other apps that maybe re will read text files. Quite a few of these apps will actually let you do that. I know... I'm pretty sure to do or which we just saw will do that. I think, and this one will do that. And I think the the next one I'm going to show you will do that as well. I'm not sure. We'll have to see. I'm and I maybe GNOME to do will will do that too. I don't have GNOME to do installed, but anyways, so th that allows you to kind of create your own syncing capabilities, and that's nice because other than that, there's no other syncing capabilities here. I find it a little clunky though because we have all these big buttons and stuff and then the tasks are really small. Now that might be like I might be able to make it look a little bit better if I ch you know change the size of it. But for the most part this one is just a little weirdly designed in some ways. The cool thing is is this if you use the Pomodoro system where basically you work 25 minutes or something and then take a 5 minute break and you can just keep doing that throughout the day. This has a Pomodoro timer built right in, and it can be associated with tasks. So if you you know you you can create a Pomodoro tile timer for this task, then once the task is done, then the timer stops or whatever. That's really cool. So if you, if that's something that you know you prefer, that it, this one might be the one for you. Let's move on to the next one. The next one is super productivity. All one word, I believe, if you're looking for it in the AUR. This one is pr probably the most full-featured, well-designed app on the list that's open source. I'm ex I'm going to say it's open source. I'm going to have to go look. Okay, so I just went and checked. It is open source. It's, it's under the MIT license, so that's a good thing. It has a lot of options and a lot of settings and the ability to sync things to, like, Google Drive and WebDAV and stuff. So that's cool. As keyboard shortcuts and the Pomodoro timer, and this one is also built in. And I I believe it also has like habit tracking and stuff, so it's really cool and very well designed. I do have some gripes with it, and one of them is that you just can't change this background. Apparently, that's just I don't know why that bothers me so much. And maybe, yeah, it just apparently you can't change it. I also don't use it because it doesn't have the really cool predictive, you know, thing that to do is test. So, you know, that's disappointing. But I'd probably if if Planner worked better, I would use Planner. This is the second one on my list that I'd probably use if it just didn't have the weird quirks that it has. I I probably maybe someday. Let's put it that way. We'll give this a try because I do like the fact that it's open source. Because, like I said, the one that uh, I use is not open source. So let's actually go look at the one that I use. Okay, so this is Todoist. Now, Todoist is closed source, and this is actually the Todoist Electron app that is maintained by a, uh, just a regular old developer. It's not actually associated with Todoist in any way, as far as I know. Todoist does have their own uh, application, but it's available as a Snap or Flat Pack. And it is in the AUR, but I can't get it for whatever to actually launch once I install it from the AUR. So there's some weirdness going on there. But I like Todoist for 
a few reasons. One, it has its a mobile application, so I can sync these back and forth between my phone and my desktop. That's paramount for me because I want to be able to access my app, my tasks while I'm on the go. Not that I go anywhere, but whatever. I also like the way that it actually allows you to create tasks. So if I create a new task here, just say I want to do this task Tuesday at 4 p.m. And it will schedule it for Tuesday at 4 p.m. And there are several things I could do. I could do this task next week. And it will show it to me the first day of the next week. Uh, I can also add a time. I can ha have do I could do that do it this way. Do this task every day. And it would repeat it every day. And I could just do it every day at 4 p.m. And it would do it every day at 4 p.m. None of the other ones really have this, except for Planner. Planner will actually do this because it integrates very well with Todoist. So, like I said, I really wish Planner would work well in Window Managers. Really, this is the premier feature why I use Todoist. The, the syncing capability I could do without the syncing thing because I could. A lot of those one, ones that I showed you will allow you to export via text.txt files or some kind of comment separated values or something. And I could figure out some kind of system for that. But this predictive thing that or whatever they call it, I'm not I can't remember what they what to do is calls this. But this is just a feature that I I miss every time I try something else. Like I don't want to have to go through and manually schedule things because this here doesn't make me manually do it. So that's just, you know kind of the reason why I do do things the way I do it with Todoist. So it was a disjointed video as per usual, but I hope that you've got something out of it. I There were a couple that I didn't cover. I didn't cover GNOME To Do. That one just didn't make the list for whatever reason. I think it's okay. I haven't used it, like, forever. Like, since it first was released, I think. And But it's been, like I said, it's been forever since I used it. But uh, it's probably pretty good. There are also several... Uh, browser extensions that you could probably use that are fa fairly decent but these are the ones that I found like I said at the beginning there are a million gajillion of these things so if you use something that's not on this list that's really good let me know in the top the comments below also if there's any on these li on the list that you use every day let me know why because I would love to use one of the open source ones I would like uh, like I don't prefer using closed source stuff I would just prefer but that one feature of to do is keeps me there anyways thank you for watching if you enjoyed this video give it a thumbs up if not give it a thumbs down uh, you can support the channel by go by subscribing or hitting the notification icon bell or both or whatever you can also support us on patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast thank you to Devon C for being our patron and I'll see you next time thanks for watching